All right, so today I'm going to be going over the uh, latest uh, 3D printable magnetic gear that I've been designing uh, and how to assemble it um, and some of the details on how it works. Uh, so the goal of this was to make the smallest 3D printable magnetic gear possible uh, using hobby grade hardware. Um, so these magnets, set screws, and bearings are all, you can get them all on Amazon for under 15 bucks. Uh, like total, it's super, super cheap and uh, pretty cool that you can make your own. Uh, the I would recommend if you're using FDM to print these parts, uh, which I did in PLA, but you should definitely use a 0.25 or smaller uh, nozzle. Otherwise, you're just not going to have the resolution uh, to get to get these things accurate. If you have an SLA printer, I'd probably recommend using that, especially for the small parts, um, but totally not necessary. All right, uh, so I guess for starters, you probably see this strange uh, sort of pattern that these magnets are in. Um, so this is what's called a hallback array, uh, which is basically a passive way to arrange magnets to move the strength of the magnetic field to primarily one side of the magnets. Um, so it basically cancels out the magnetic fields on one side to slightly increase the uh, forces on the other side. Uh, so how this works is um, Basically, I'm sure people are familiar from, you know, high school or what have you. Um, you might have seen these uh, lines of force between a magnet. So if this is the north and the south pole, um, they're basically lines of force connecting them. And so most people have seen a diagram similar to this, um, where these it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, but the strength is less. Um, so I guess for starters, um, to prove that this is accurate, uh, you, there's this stuff called magnetic viewing film, which is pretty cool. Uh, and how this works is there are basically all these little particles of nickel floating in oil between the two pieces of laminate. Uh, and so when this becomes br uh, white essentially or, or, or light colored uh, it means that the plane that the viewing film is going through is parallel to the line of force um, so for example I have a big magnet right here um, where this is north uh, if we put the plane directly on top you can draw the line of where that would go and where it intersects all of these lines um, where it's parallel, so where these these lines of force are parallel to this line, that's where we expect to see white. So if this is the top, we're kind of just expecting it to see it around the edge, which is true. And actually, you can see as we raise it up off the line, you can see it expand, which uh, makes sense, right? Because this this parallel point is moving further and further out in the curve. Alternatively, if you put this magnet on its side and all of a sudden now you want to get a slice here, you'll see that the only time that it's parallel is a line separating the two poles, right? Because as this gets smaller and smaller and smaller, um, it, it eventually, this parallel point on this line, the only part that's parallel is going to be right there because everything else is going to be is going to be heading out. Um, and then if, if we raise that up, it also expands slightly, which which should make sense. But uh, so, so that's what magnetic viewing film does. So if we, it doesn't show which pole is which per se, but it shows the um, the magnitude of the of the forces and, and their direction. So if we take a Hallback array like this, um, so I guess for starters, uh, Hallback array if we do the same sort of pattern with five magnets, right? Um, for this case, we'll say arrows are pointing towards north. So if all these arrows are pointing north, uh, the lines of constant force are going to look very similar, right? It's going to look just like this, where this is north and that's south. It's just going to look like a bigger magnet, um, except these are gonna get really big, really fast, and the force will be higher, but um, 
other than that, it's going to behave just like this. But there's the Hallback Array is if instead of aligning them like this, we have five magnets again. And let's say we align this one up and this one down. And then we align that one. We basically point the norths to the north. So if we want it to be stronger on, on this side and weaker on this side, we point every alternating one towards the side we want to be stronger. So that means that would be that side. So it's basically a grouping of four that you can pattern. And what this looks like is uh, if we draw some lines of constant force, and they've done simulations that you can you can find online. But basically, there's a very low magnetic field uh, magnitude here, um, and then you'll see you'll you'll see this uh, this sort of like three three lobe magnetic field on this side. And basically, what you're doing is you're creating a north pole here and a south pole here, and so you're shifting you're shifting all of the uh, The, the force, uh, the intensity onto one side. Uh, you, you'll see this in like refrigerator magnets. Um, you'll notice that they're only actually, they'll only stick to the refrigerator on one side. Um, and that's because, you know, it's, it's cheaper if you, if like, you, you know, you're basically paying for magnetism and they want to optimize how, how much they have to, how much they have to use. So uh, this basically will create a stronger magnetic field. So if we do this in a circle, right? If we have a circle, we could, and we want, so for example, this one, we want the magnetic field to be stronger going inwards because we don't, anything on the outside is kind of a waste. Um, so if we have a north pointed here, that means we'd want a north pointed here and here, and then a south, or rather a north pointing outward, and then a, a north pointing away from that, and then north in etc 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 all the way around and so you notice that's exactly what this is right it's the number of magnets in here are divisible by four and so if that one is facing the north is facing out of the circle the next one's north is facing that way and the next one's north is facing into the circle next one is facing back towards that that previous magnet and that repeats all the way around the same exact uh, pattern uh, is in the output shaft um, they're just less magnitudes. And you'll see, so the, di the difference is um, we're really concerned with the number of poles, the, the rather pole pairs, north-south. Um, so we would get equivalent behavior if we replaced every four magnets in these arrays with a single magnet, but we would have a lot less uh, magnetic, there'd be a lot less strength in the field. Um, so that's why we're doing it like this. So we're really minimizing the number of magnetic fields. So for example, in this case, that's this is a north-south pole pair, this is a north-south pole pair, this is a north-south pole pair, and this is a north-south pole pair. So there are four pole pairs on this entire rotor. Um, and on this one, I believe there are uh, 12, if I remember correctly. All right. Um, so that's how the magnets are arranged. Uh, the next problem is how to actually get the magnets in there. So how you do that? Um, I guess first, the modulator ring. Uh, to install this, uh, make sure you print it facing down like so. And then uh, take your set screws and you can just screw them between the, I guess, teeth is a good name for this. Until it bottoms out. Um, these are 3 sixteenths. Uh, length, but you can get away with less or slightly more. There's actually quite a bit of clearance. And just fill all of those, like so. Um, in order to install the magnets, it's a little tricky because they're so small and fiddly, and you need to know exactly the direction they go. So uh, I, I actually have a tool that I use to do so. Uh, it's basically just a little thing that says north. Uh, you put a magnet in there. Um, and then now magnets will fall into this little cavity in the front and align in a consistent way every time. So I just labeled this north, but it's just, it just doesn't really matter just to be consistent. And so say we want 
these two need to be opposite directions. So this one needs to align with that one. So I remember that north was facing out of the circle when I installed that one. So north would have to be facing out of the circle again. So you press it in, it goes in about halfway. And then I would take like a piece of hard, flat piece of wood or something and just press it to get it to go in all the way. And you're gonna to wanna to do that all the way around. Uh, it's a little bit of a tedious process, um, but it goes pretty, it, it, with the tool, it, it, it isn't too bad. All right, uh, now you're done once you get all that done. So it's basically install time. Uh, so all you do is you take the output rotor and the modulator rotor, push them together. All of these uh, parts that go into bearings are flared a little bit, so you will have to push them. And then finally, push that in there. Put the outer ring on. Put the other one. And you're done. This is it. It's super small. Um, I have it configured so the the green is the input, and then this has a gear ratio of uh, I believe it's four um, coming out. Um, and so you can see I also have the little propeller you can print to demonstrate it. Um, but as you can see, it is spinning at the gear ratio. Um, it's just like other magnetic gears, uh, they have this unique feature where they, uh, you know, where another gearbox might fail uh, if it gets over torqued. A uh, magnetic gearbox, they have pretty low torque limits, but if you pass the torque limit, it just skips the next valley. There's no damage to it at all. Um, so you can actually feel if I, if I hold if I hold this and rotate this, you can you can feel it clicking into all the next valleys. Um, alternatively, you can actually take this guy off, and um, it helps with alignment, but it actually works. Uh, it works without that. So we put the propeller back on. You can actually see we're spinning that green circle with the set screws in it, and it's spinning the yellow at a different speed, a faster speed. It also works in reverse. Um, I will say the it will increase the torque to a limit, but it still won't go over the torque limit, right? Because then it'll start skipping again. So uh, magnetic gearing is pretty much only, only useful for very specific circumstances or if you're gearing something, uh, gearing something up. Um, that way you don't you, you know your torque limit going in. Um, another cool thing is we can actually look at these parts through the magnetic film and see the hallback arrays um, actually working. So we take this part again. Here is the outer shell. And you can actually see the pole pairs. So here's the north, here's the south, and they're all focused inward as opposed to outward. So um, the magnetic fields go in really far. And if we look at this thing, we should see the exact opposite, right? We should see the magnetic fields be flared outwards, which they are. It almost looks like a virus, um, but the uh, you can actually see the magnetic fields are biased outwards and there's very little magnetic field. They're all canceling each other out basically in the middle. Um, and so that's what allows the really strong engagement um, between these two. So functionally how this works um, is this is sitting in the middle of this. Um, and as you spin the modulator gear, what you're doing is basically um, making the connection between the poles in this yellow part and the poles in this yellow part stronger and weaker, right? Because the magnetic fields, um, uh, you can kind of think of it as like conductance of an electrical signal, right? Um, air has more resistance than copper for electrical signals um, and ferrous metal has more, um, there's a term for it, but uh, essentially resistance to the 
magnetic flux than uh, uh, the air. So we're basically like having channels where these magnets can interact with each other more strongly. And so by spinning this modulator gear, you're actually basically modulating a signal um, that uh, combined with the layout of these magnets on the outside will uh, create a new, this is basically the interference between them. And that's what spins the inner one. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to answer. Um, or I'll feel free to ask. Um, thanks for watching. Take care.